I this, I was gonna uh, arrive in a wild booty. <laughs> And today I'm here with part two of my September wrap-up. I read a total of 14 books this month, but I talked about my first seven in the first video. So check that out if you're interested. So these are the next seven that I read. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book I ended up reading is Things Change by Patrick Jones, and I gave this book a 3 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. This book follows Joanna, who has a crush on a senior named Paul, and she's very surprised when he starts to pay attention to her. Things start out great, their relationship is amazing, until Paul starts to show his angry side. So now Joanna will do anything in order to stay on his good side. I honestly can't decide how I feel about this book. At times, I really liked it. But then other times I wanted to throw it across the room, which is why I gave it like your average three star because I just, I don't know. One of like the major issues I had with the book was the dialogue. It was very forced and choppy and it just got annoying really quickly. I absolutely hated Paul's character and I hated how Joanna just kept running back to him. Like girl, what you doing? I know it's hard when you're in this situation, but girl, come on. The only character I actually liked was Kara. I think that there was like an attempt at a good message, but it definitely fell short for me. So, I don't know what I feel about this book, but I, I like the cover. It reminds me of Why We Broke Up by Daniel Hamler, because, you know, rose petals, but... Uh, it's hard, no. The next book I read, I was actually surprised by. I did not go into it thinking I would like it as much as I did, but it is Mason by Thomas Pendleton, and I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars. This book follows Mason Avert, who is special. He's a high schooler who has a developmental delay and also a very powerful ability. Mason lives with his Aunt Molly and his sadistic older brother named Jean, and the book also follows Renee, who was Mason's only friend until they start to get older and they start to grow apart. So Mason always tries to stay out of Jean's way and not anger him, but Jean always finds a way to punish Mason. One day, Renee finds herself in the middle of one of Jean's little issues, and she gets seriously injured, and as Mason's abilities begin to grow, he decides to take matters into his own hands and seek revenge on Jean and his gang of friends. So if you know me, you know that I really like horror slasher books or movies, so I was going into this with pretty low expectations. I thought it would just be kind of like, eh, whatever. But I was actually pleasantly surprised. It was very interesting right from the beginning. Like literally the first chapter just talks about Gene and how he tried to kill Mason when he was younger. And then the story picks up from there and it was just like, wait. <laughs> What? The plot was really fast paced. It kept you on the edge of your seat the entire time. You really wanted to know what was going to happen next. Jean was so creepy and is such a good psychopath. Like, I honestly think that this would make such a cool movie. The whole concept of Mason's ability was really interesting. So, like, Warner Brothers or, like, another major movie producer, y'all should, like, check this out because, like, it'd make a good horror film. The only huge major issue I had with the book was that the R word was repeatedly used as an insult. I personally hate that language. I've always had a problem with it, so it's like a personal thing. So that's why I only gave it four out of five stars instead of a higher rating. But if you're like not offended by that, then like totally go for it, read the book, because it's really good. The next book that I read for this month was Dreams of the Dead by Thomas Randall, and I ended up giving this a 3 out of 5 stars. It follows Kara and her father, who moved to Japan after the death of their mother in a car accident, and since she is the only American in her new school, a lot of the students don't really want anything to do with her, and that's when she meets two girls, one's named Miho, and one is named Sakura. When she arrives at her new school, she quickly realizes that all the students are in mourning for one of the students who was murdered. Her name was Akane, and she happens to be Sakura's older sister. So all the students, including Kara, are plagued with these nightmares and they start to fear for their lives when more and more students end up dead. I really wanted to like this story because like it's super creepy looking and I'm really into like horror thriller right now 
but it just it was slow it wasn't exciting I wanted more from it it was like advertised as this huge horror thing and it just wasn't scary in the slightest to me I was just kind of like okay whatever honestly I found like the Japanese culture aspect of the book more interesting than the actual storyline I was more intrigued by learning about the culture rather than what was actually happening to the characters. I was just like, okay, you're gonna die, cool, whatever, don't really give a shit. Yeah, it was supposed to be a horror book, but I wasn't getting any horror vibes from it. The next book that I read was The Pretty One by Cheryl Clam, and I ended up giving this a 2 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It was not very good. The book follows Megan Fisher, who has always been in the shadow of her older sister Lucy, who is a very talented, beautiful actress. One day, Megan is in a horrific car crash, which causes her to need plastic surgery, which alters her appearance drastically. So, she's now more beautiful than her older sister Lucy, and that's when things begin to get complicated. The boy who she has been in love with since the first time she's laid eyes on him several years ago is starting to pay attention to her. Unfortunately for Megan, her best friend Simon also is starting to pay attention to her in a different way that she does not exactly want, and her older sister Lucy is starting to act a bit strange towards her. So as the tension builds with each relationship she is facing, Megan needs to learn to cope with her new life. I have no idea what it is about this book, but something about it did not sit well with me. I did not like it as much as I thought. I would. It started out good, it was really funny, it was entertaining, and then it just like slowly went downhill for me. I didn't like Megan as a main character, I just thought she was really annoying and whiny, like literally everything was like, what was me, my life is terrible. I also didn't care for Lucy or Simon or Drew, so it was kind of just like, eh. I did like the overall message that the author was trying to convey, you know, that like it's more important about what's on the inside than the outside and blah blah blah. But it just kind of fell short for me. I, 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 it's just, that's how I feel about this book. The next book I read, I absolutely adored, and I want to say thank you to the author for sending me a copy of it. It was one of my most anticipated reads for a couple months back, so when she contacted me, I was like, hell yeah, I need it. It is Gemini by Sonia Mukherjee. Probably still saying that wrong. I'm sorry. I have a full review if you are interested in my thoughts. I ended up giving it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I absolutely adored it, so check out my review if you want to hear my full thoughts. The next book I have... I also really enjoyed, I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads, and it is Finding Audrey by Sophie Kinsella. I'm going to have a full review of it up on October 1st, so maybe it's up right now, maybe it's not, but come back on October 1st and you can see my full thoughts on it. But I thought it was super cute, and I really enjoyed it. And then the final book that I read for the month of September is Anti-Goddess by Kendar Blake, and this is the first book in a trilogy, and I just did not like it that much. I gave it a 2. 0.5 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. So it follows these gods who are immortal, they're supposed to live forever, but they are slowly dying. Athena and Hermes start on this quest to find Demeter, who is supposed to give them answers on how to survive. This leads them to a 16 year old girl named Cassandra who has always considered herself to be psychic, but she doesn't actually know the full truth of who she used to be in another life. Once she discovers who she actually is, she finds out that she is actually being chased by the gods and she needs to escape before they find her and the war can begin. I read Kendra Blake's Anna Dress in Blood and I absolutely adored it, so I thought that I would really like this story as well just because I liked the other one so much, but that definitely was not the case. I thought that the whole concept of the book sounded really interesting. I'm usually pretty into Greek mythology, so I was very excited about this book, but it definitely fell short for me. I think that the pacing was really slow in the beginning. I wasn't drawn into the story at all. I was just kind of reading it and hoping that it would end, to be honest. I wasn't connecting to any of the characters. The overall concept was cool, but the plot was really confusing and I had to like flip back several pages at a time and reread what was happening to like figure it all out. I did really like the romance in this book between Cassandra and Aiden because it was already like established so there was absolutely no insta-love. Which you know you girl hate insta-love. I also think that the mythology was portrayed really well, the stories were accurate and it was really cool to see how she put a modern twist onto the stories that already existed. But overall, I'm disappointed in this book and I will continue. Hi daddy! How are you? Okay. Alright guys, so that was the final seven books out of the 14 that I read in the month of September. Let me know down below if you read any of them or what you thought of them. And I'll see you all in the next video. Goodbye!